First of all, Happy New Year and thanks for everyone who participated in our last year's giveaway. And I already drew all the winners on my Instagram stories, but in case you missed it, here are the winners for you as well. The third prize goes to Murray McDonald's and you won $50 of gift cards for our online store and you are the only one who hasn't contacted me on Instagram to actually collect your prize, so please do so. And the second prize goes to AC, I guess is the name, and you already hit me up on Instagram and you won $100 of gift cards, so thank you for this. And our main prize, the Zipon Slider E800, goes to the account name Earthmovers. And you have also contacted me on Instagram and the slider is actually on its way to you. So sorry for everyone who didn't win any prizes, but I'm pretty sure we will be doing some giveaways in the near future. So stay tuned and hit that notification bell to actually be informed when I'm uploading another giveaway. But now having said that, let's actually talk about today's topic and that is time code. Do you need it? What is it for? How does it work? And is it actually as complicated as I thought it was in the beginning? Spoiler alert, it's not. So more on that after the intro. So I have been a filmmaker for a couple of years now and a lot of our work revolves around interviews, shooting interviews for corporations or even doing personal profiles. So we're really used to shooting with multiple cameras and syncing audio and post. Where we didn't really have a lot of experience with is using timecode. And I'll be completely honest with you, when I first heard of timecode and I saw that this is mostly reserved for bigger cameras and cinema cameras and bigger older film sets, I kind of shied away from it and thought like, yeah, I don't really need that step. I'll just sync everything in post via the scratch audio. And that's what I did for the most part, but it definitely does have some flaws. So syncing via scratch audio is actually totally fine. It's really easy and it works most of the times but when it doesn't work, it's a huge pain in the butt. So why not sync via audio all the time? I had multiple situations where this just didn't work because either my subject was way too far away from the camera and the camera couldn't record scratch audio at all, or I had some interference and it was a very loud environment, or for some other reason, it just didn't work, even with external software like Pluralize. And with the time code, you don't have to worry about that at all because your camera could literally be 10 miles apart from your audio source and you could still easily sync it with one click. No idea how that would be useful, but maybe you actually find yourself in that scenario one day. And I had this one project recently where we shot with multiple cameras, multiple audio sources, and we had to sync everything in post. And unfortunately, it wasn't able to sync all my clips via the scratch audio, so I had to do this manually. And this was so painful. So I actually started to invest into timecode. So first of all, what is timecode? Timecode is basically nothing else but a continuously running really precise clock. And you need a timecode generator to actually start a unified clock on all of your devices. But I'll get into that a little later. So now that our timecode generator generated a unified time for us, we need to synchronize all of our devices with it. And once we've done that, we can actually shoot with as many cameras and external audio sources as we like, because they're all synced perfectly to each other and it's literally just a second and click in post and everything is perfectly synchronized. And I always thought that this is complicated, you need a lot of external equipment and you really only need high-end cameras to actually shoot with time codes. So I really did shy away from it and I just use scratch audio for the most part. But now that I've actually come to use time code, it's so easy and so helpful. So here is how it works in detail. So here's one example how I use time code all the time. This is how I typically record our YouTube videos. I record my video on the Canon C300 Mark III and then I use a shotgun microphone that is going directly into the Zoom F6. And now I need to sync those two in post. And with timecode, this is really easy. So the way I use this is with this little timecode generator and this is from Tentacle and it's called the Sync E. So this little device generates a timecode. So in order to do this, I need to start and now I have it turned on. And as soon as this is blinking with the green light, it's now generating a time code, meaning it basically just started an internal clock. So now I need to sync all these devices. 
And this is fairly easy. I used this cable and that is meant for the Canon C300. So I plug it in here and then all I need to do, maybe come here and maybe film this. So this one has a time code plug right here. So all I need to do, can you do me one favor? Just film the screen right here. So now the time code is running at 20.37.04 and that is basically nothing else but a clock. It's 8 p.m. 37 minutes and 10 seconds, 11 seconds and so on. So now I'm going to plug in the cable, keep the camera on the screen. So now our Canon C300 is synced with the timecode generator. Now all I need to do is sync the same thing with the Zoom F6. So as you can see right here, the time code on the Canon C300 is 20, 38 and 30 seconds. But on the Zoom F6, it's 20, 14 and 30 seconds. So it's completely way off. So all I need to do right now is plug this into the time code port of the Zoom F6. And this is going to be pretty hard with only one hand. So I'm going to do it like this. Do you film the screen? Mm -hmm. So I plug it in and now it changes. So Right now, you can see those two are perfectly in sync. Mm -hmm. So this is all it took to synchronize these two devices. And basically, I didn't even need the time code generator for this simple setup because the Zoom F6 has a time code generator built in. So what I could do without having to use the tentacle syncs is just start the time code generation on the Zoom F6 and then use a cable to plug it into the C300 from the Zoom F6 and that would have worked as well. But since I'm using this with multiple cameras all the time or even the Trek E that I'm using right now to record this, I just leave it at this because this is really simple and this way I don't have to constantly change the settings from external time code to internal time code on the Zoom F6. But if you only have these two devices, you don't necessarily need the Tentacle Sync E's. Particularly with the Zoom F6 and the Tentacle Syncs, it says on their website that there are some sync issues here and there. And I didn't really read the entire thing, but it's safer to just have everything plugged into the Zoom F6 at the entire time. I did run some setups where I didn't have it uh, plugged in the entire time. But if you really want to be safe, just have the time code generator and have it plugged into your Zoom F6 the entire time. Time. So now after I'm done with recording this YouTube video, I just take my memory card from the C300 as well as the one from the Zoom F6, just put those two onto my computer hard drive, import that into Final Cut, I just click on both of these files and right click synchronize. And it synchronizes via timecode within a second. And now I just replaced my internal audio or whatever the uh, audio track on my C300 Mark III was because I didn't really have to record any audio on the C300 at all and replaced it with my external microphone that is hanging right up front here. And now I have one clean track from the C300 Mark III video with my Zoom F6 audio. And it was literally just one click. And the cool thing is that this would have worked the same way if I would have had multiple cameras and multiple audio recorders. If I had three C300 Mark III's and even a C70 or maybe even a Sony FS7 and I had like a huge setup with multiple cameras and maybe even have a lot of different participants and different audio sources, when they're all synced via timecode, it's literally just one snap, put them into a multicam sequence and everything is synced up in post. And this becomes really useful really quickly if you do some multi-angle interview shooting. And that's what I usually do. Usually I have the shotgun microphone for my main audio and then I also run a backup lavalier microphone. And for this I use the Tentacle Track E system. And that is a dedicated lavalier microphone field recorder that is actually amazing and it has 32-bit float. But I will do a full review on this one in the near future. So subscribe if you want to see that one as well. And the really cool thing about the Trek E system is that it also recognizes timecode. So I just use my generator that I already used to synchronize all my other devices, plug it into the Trek E field recorder, and now it also synchronizes with all the other devices. So now I can run multiple lavalier microphones on multiple people at the same time with an external microphone as well with multiple cameras and they're all perfectly synced. And I only need one timecode generator to do all that. 
The Tentacle Sync system is also pretty cool because it has an app where you can actually synchronize all of your devices if you have multiple time code generators or if you have a lot of track E systems and you can monitor and sync them all via one app. So that's pretty cool and all if you have a Canon C300, a Sony FS7 or a really high-end cinema camera. But what do I do if I have a camera that doesn't support timecode like my EOS R5 or EOS R6 or basically any other DSLR or DSLM out there? I'm glad you asked because that is also pretty cool with the Tentacle Sync system because it also works with camera that don't support timecode natively. So now I use this timecode generator from Tentacle Sync that I used earlier and I jam the signal into the C300, then I jam it into the Zoom F6, after that I sync my track E with it and then I use the same thing and plug it into the microphone port of the R5. And here it's important that this needs to be plugged into the EOS R5 at all times. And what the timecode generator does right now, it actually records a kind of beeping sound sequence onto the EOS R5's audio track. And with this one, you can actually synchronize everything to all your timecode devices as well. So now after you're done shooting a multi-camera interview, the audio track on the EOS R5 sounds a little bit like this. And with this alien techno music, you can actually use this to synchronize all your devices in their specific software. And this is really easy. You just open up their software and you dump all the files in it. All the video files from the C300, the R5, as well as all the audio files from the Track E Lavalier, as well as the Zoom F6. I'm using Final Cut, but this also works for Premiere and I think it also works for DaVinci, but I'm not 100% sure. So after you dumped all of your footage and audio sources into the app, you just tell it to export it via a Final Cut multicam sequence. And that is done by one click. And then you just open that little project, open it up and all of a sudden you have a perfectly synced multicam sequence right in your library. And that was really easy and it works with multiple cameras and audio sources as well. Just keep in mind, the more cameras you have that don't support native timecode in, the more technical sync devices you need. In my case, if I'm running a setup with the Canon C300, the EOS R5, the EOS R6, the Zoom F6, and let's say two lavalier microphones, I only need two of these tentacle sync devices. So that's actually not that bad. So there you have it. This is actually everything you need to know about timecode. And it really isn't as complicated as I thought it would be in the beginning. And now I use it all the time and I never even bother with syncing via scratch audio at all anymore. And if you want to check out all the equipment that you need to use timecode, at least from Tentacle Sync, and that's the company that I use. I will link them down in the description below so you can check them out yourself. So if you found this video helpful, please give this video a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. Subscribe if you want to see more as well as the review of the Track E system in the very near future. And I would like to see you on the next one.